<laughs> so an easy way to remember pitta dosh because it's fire and water visualize the fire the sun and hence the lemon you so the sour have pungent it's kind of like, yeah. sour pungent and salty yes okay that's the taste so visualize lemon pitta people are generally like lemon is sour and they salty they also sweat a lot so if in in a group of 3 people the person who feels cold the first is pitta the person who sweats a lot is pitta and the person who's genuinely very stable and doesn't move around much in a party is kapha you yeah. can easily pick a person in the group so pitta people tend to sweat a lot and hence you know their body is already salty so they salty sour and uh, pungent which is spicy which means they should eat less oily and spicy foods because their body type is already hot oily sharp intense and penetrating which means we need to sweeten them how do we sweeten them we get the most sweet foods natural fruits and you can also have a lot of bitter vegetables because it helps in lightening the tissues mm -hmm. and also deworming the body like coffee spinach they are actually good for body yeah. for pitta people i always think of pitta people with the fire in their stomachs what foods would be good for that fire and what would actually enhance the fire even more which is not what we want so you imagine spicy foods in that stomach with the fire is just not going to be what we want at all just cause even more of an imbalance so anything that can actually suppress that fire as much as possible is what they want yeah and also make sure that while you're trying to keep the fire in balance without suppressing it because the metabolic fire is mm. good do not go overboard with extremes like yeah. do not have cold foods because that can actually aggravate or yeah. irritate your pitta yeah. which can cause burning mm. sensation in the stomach so pitta people shouldn't have ice creams or cold milk or cold water they should have water at yeah. room temperature or slightly warm and actually in fact no one should have ice cold water or ice cold drinks it's no. just not good for the body that's something that i have really implemented into my day to day life no ice drinks whatsoever my water is always room temperature now and that's since the course and oh, that's really good yeah. i'm so glad you've been incorporating that in your daily life <laughs> i was <style>. listening <laughs> yeah that's your dinacharya which we're going to talk about hopefully in the next yes. star video exactly so we've spoken about kapha we've spoken about pitta and vata just to revise kapha is earth and water it's responsible for stability in the body the bones to shoot deep muscles nerves and uh, hair uh, pitta is responsible for transformation in the body hence it's made of fire and water transformation literally comes from fire vata is made of air and ether or you can call it space and it's responsible for movement in the body so for kapha person have more bitter astringent pungent foods for pitta person it's good to have sweet bitter and astringent foods. astringent foods would be foods like pomegranate apples uh and vata people should have which should vata people have so the things that i've been having is coconut milk sweet foods but good sweet so kind of unrefined sugar jaggery is brilliant so now that i'm here in india i'm loving that vegetables like sweet potato mm -hmm. are good that's really good and actually sweet but also a little bit salty but not things like broccoli and cauliflower because they are more airy in nature so that wouldn't be great for the bloating <laughs> so she's got the three doshas in place and she's got the shadarasa in place which is pretty good. There we go. And <laughs> what do we say? What do we say? We become what we eat. We become what we eat. Absolutely. And we become what we think. Yeah. And the whole point is make food your medicine. Don't make medicine your food because if food is right there's no need for medicine. Mm -hmm. But if food is wrong medicine doesn't work. Yeah. because you're eating three times a day if you keep eating the wrong foods medicine will show no results yeah and i would also say eat locally as much as possible so ayurveda can absolutely be applicable anywhere around the world you just need to make slight adapt adjustments based on where you are and what is available locally so that is the introduction to ayurveda i hope you found this really really interesting and if you would like to find out about your doksha there's actually going to be an online test i'm going to leave this in the description box down below yeah that'll be great like you can actually log on to the website and fill in some details about your characteristics like your mental emotional and your physical needs like teeth nail skin hair and we can actually help you evaluate what body type you are and we'll also put up some food charts that you can start following if you want and if you don't have access to a clinic why not practice it remotely anywhere you are in the world you can find out your dosha and i think it is so interesting especially when you find out exactly what dosha you are and you can start altering little things in your life based on that so thank you so much for watching make sure you check out the coming videos